Well, right now I'm just speaking on behalf of uh, TCRS. Um, as I said, I'm one of the newest members of TCRS. Um, and I'm just going to go over a brief overview, a little bit of background, um, implementation agreement. Um, most of this has already been covered on some level by either um, Roger or Dick, so I'm just going to briefly touch on it um, and see. All right, so TCRS, uh, the Technical Committee on Roadside Safety, um, that's, uh, we, have, we serve uh, AASHTO, and we are responsible for two publications, the uh, Roadside Design Guide and um, MASH, uh, which has been discussed here. Um, has anybody ever used either one of those publications? Or no, yeah, <laughs> you have. Okay, yeah. So there's been some, um, <clears throat> probably Roadside Design Guide, which um, we are responsible for as well. It will be probably, we have an update coming on that too soon, hopefully. Um, so MASH sets the criteria and the Roadside Design Guide basically tells us how to use it. So um, NCHRP uh, 350, the MASH 2009, these are basically the same reasons that uh, Roger went over. So basically, uh, in my mind, the biggest reason was the change in vehicle fleet. So um, the other reasons um, listed on here are contributed to the why we made the change as well in 2009. Um, 2009 to 2016, um, we basically added uh, criteria for crash testing cable barriers on slopes. Um, there were some other changes as well. Um, Roger mentioned these as well, but um, they were they were minor and they were listed. Uh, they're listed there. So it, uh, as was discussed earlier, it did not sunset uh, NCHRP 350 devices. We we thought that um, industry would um, go ahead and develop devices uh, to mash, but that didn't really happen, and we didn't really require it um, as states. We we developed some generic uh, hardware, uh, non-proprietary hardware um, through the pooled funds and through our state funding research projects, but. Um, industry wasn't um, really required to, and it wasn't profitable for them to do it since we weren't requiring it. Um, so the um, implementation agreement, um, well, this was also discussed, but we had some added safety benefits um, to MASH, uh, which Roger discussed, and we, we did, um, we feel like it was important to, to implement this base because we're going to get those safety benefits unless we unless we force the issue we won't get those benefits on roadside safety um, the overview TCRS um, will continue to develop the uh, the mash document and the agreement states that uh, FHWA will continue to issue the letters of eligibility as uh, Dick discussed earlier and I'll discuss this on, uh, on the state side in my second presentation. Um, so agencies are urged, um, as Dick discussed earlier, to establish a process to um, replace hardware that has been, that's old, I guess. It was, hasn't been tested to 350 or later. So we didn't, um, we didn't define that on purpose. So. Um, States can choose whether they, how they choose to re replace that hardware. Um, I'll discuss how Texas is choosing to replace it um, next. Um, agencies are encouraged to upgrade the hardware that's been damaged, or this 350 tested and has been damaged beyond repair. That also was left um, vague for the states to, to, the, to find for themselves what damage beyond repair is. Um, that can mean a lot of different things for a lot of different states. So. Uh, a lot of different budgets. Okay, so after the sunset dates, only safety hardware evaluated to match 2016 criteria will be allowed for new installations. Um, that sometimes that might that may bring up difficulties for some states because uh, that means we we have to get it tested, but it also means we have to have time to add it to our to our qualified products list. Um, for some states, that may be a problem. So this, uh, this section of the agreement is discussing the temporary work zone devices. This will be one of the bigger device, one of the bigger sections, and it'll be um, maybe tough to meet if we have to run all of these crash tests um, for all of these devices. 
Um, so uh, modifications are to be evaluated uh, using MASH 2016 criteria only. Um, we defined it that way um, on, on purpose, basically. We needed, uh, we didn't want people to have um, hardware that was evaluated to 350 and then come back and try to make a modification and evaluate it to old hardware or 2009 that was evaluated to 2009 and modify it. Uh, we need to evaluate it to the new MASH hardware, MASH criteria. Um, Non-significant changes. Um, that um, is, um, I guess, uh, non-significant. Um, I guess FHWA will share that responsibility with TCRS, I believe is the current, um, what we're gonna do, I think. Uh, it'll come to FHWA. If they have um, any questions, they will forward those to TCRS um, for what is non-significant. Non-significant um, changes can be evaluated using finite element analysis, which we have been doing for since 350, and um, as long as there's no negative safety effects from that, from those changes. The availability of, um, of the hardware. Um, some of this was already discussed as well. So we do have some W-beam barriers um, um, that have been tested. Uh, Dick discussed those. Uh, we have some, uh, we're not really concerned with that category. Um, at least TxDOT is not concerned with it. Um, cast in place, uh, concrete barriers. Um, we have some of those that are, that are tested as well, some shapes. And we don't know exactly how many tests we need to run on those, but, but TxDOT at least is not concerned with meeting that deadline. Um, the cable barriers, those are all proprietary items, um, at least for TxDOT. I don't, and we're not concerned with that. We think that we'll have several of the cable barrier companies that will, that will meet uh, the deadline for the cable barriers. Uh, crash cushions, we have a couple that have um, been tested already to MASH and have applied for letters of eligibility. So we have, we're well on our way to meeting that category. Um, bridge rails, um, bridge railing, um, we have a little concern with bridge railing. Uh, we may uh, not have enough time for that, we're not sure. Every state has many different bridge rails. So um, they all, we all use different ones, they're not all the same. If we have to run testing for all the different bridge rails, and all the different uh, anchorages, and it'll be cumbersome, and it might uh, run over, and we may not be able to meet that deadline uh, for all of the bridge rails. We will have some tested. We already have some. We have some in, in each category. I think TxDOT has TL5, TL4, and TL3, some of them. Um, this is just an illustration of some of the guardrail and concrete barriers that we have tested. Um, the cost, we don't really know uh, what it's gonna cost us to do it because we're not settled on how many tests we're gonna have to run. Uh, we may end up, um, right now, TxDOT is uh, under the assumption that we won't run all of the tests for everything, but we still may have to. So we can't say what the cost is gonna be to run all these tests. Uh, we can say that we expect there to be um, an increase in cost per unit um, these units will be typically sturdier because they have to withstand a bigger, bigger load, as Roger explained earlier. So there'll probably be an increased cost per unit. Uh, so ASHTO, um, the next steps that need to be taken, we do need a, um, a catalog of all the mash tested devices. Um, ASHTO is uh, encouraging uh, states to share their um, qualified products list, what they have on their lists, um, to share their plans, what their states are gonna, each state is gonna do. Um, they're encouraging states to uh, participate in the pooled fund. Um, much of the research that, that comes out and has been done for MASH has been done through the pooled funds. Um, and ASHTO is encouraging that. Um, ongoing research, uh, there is a, an NCHRP 20-7 uh, uh, project that is uh, evaluating the bridge railings. Uh, it evaluates the, 
well, I guess it evaluates more than 350. It evaluates all the bridge wells, I believe, to um, uh, determine a methodology to uh, determine what it might meet in MASH. So we may not, be, may not have to run those tests. It'll determine whether we might need to run those tests or which ones we, we may not need to run. Um, so it may be able to eliminate some of those testing for us.